when she kisses Armand, it's it's so interesting. Uh, one wonders, you know, whether it was blocked that way or it was just a, a, a garb of improvisation. I tend to think it's the latter, uh, where she le leans over Armand and and rather than just one big kiss, she kisses his entire face without using her hands. She doesn't even cup his head. Immediately, she, she kind of puts him in the feminine position. I, I think she tends to do that a lot with her in her love scenes. She's not the aggressor. The man puts the moves on her, but then she takes over. In Camille, where she's definitely the older woman with this just incredibly beautiful young Robert Taylor, it's just perfect that he suddenly becomes rather girly and she just leans over and devours him. Women liked her, men hated her. She wasn't their idea of a real woman because she was androgynous and that didn't appeal and she was too grand and too elegant for Joe Sixpack though his wife quite liked her. And her androgynous charm, which was, of course, the lesbian side of her nature, projected enormously on film for those who could pick up on it. Can I get you anything, sir? No, thank you. The master says you're to have everything you need. Mm. If you should need anything, my room is at the end of the passage. She prefers you. This was a moment that both sexes reevaluated what they saw in Greta Garbo. She thought of herself as a boy. And ideally, a boy with another boy it was a kind of sexual fantasy. <laughs> well, uh, don't you think since we're going to share the same bed, we should be introduced. Morning, Eva. I would think she would probably bring out the lesbian in most uh, uh, heterosexual women. But, Your Majesty, you cannot die an old maid. I have no intention to, Chancellor. I shall die a bachelor. She, <laughs> she would sometimes refer to herself in the masculine. She would say, um, I have been smoking since I was a small boy. She would say, I've been a naughty boy today. Give an old man a cup of tea. Someone surely missed a good man in me. I'm a bad scout. Where's the little boy's room? As she would call it. And you go in there after she'd used it, and the seat would be up. She was constantly playing with those kinds of phrases and gender confusions in an effort to amuse people. One of the few lengthy letters that Garbo ever wrote to her closest friend, Salka Virchel, quote, Well, I was thinking about the Napoleon story, and I was going to ask you something that you probably would not like. I have a great longing for trousers, and if I ask you in time, maybe you can put in a little sequence with the trousers. I'm sorry not to contribute anything more, but it is merely to remind you about the trousers. Trousers, girls in trousers, pressed trousers, girls, trousers, trousers, by Gertrude Stein. Garbo had no objection to being a role model for those who wanted to change convention, and this has led some to question her sexuality. To say that Garbo is bisexual or lesbian would be just conjecture. Uh, clearly, she had a, uh, a set of uh, relationships with very interesting men, uh, romantic relationships with, with uh, some very interesting men over time, and I think that's really the focus of her, her, uh, her interests. One such affair was with the conductor Leopold Stokowski in 1938, and along with it came the telephoto lenses and the ruthless intrusion of the press.
by trying to run away, she inspired such ridiculous heights as the, uh, the newsman from some paper in California who actually chased her car and hopped on the running board and got her to say a single word, which was, damn. And that was called the one-word interview with Greta Garbo. This once, she did the opposite and held a press conference to beg the newspapers to keep out of her life. Nobody listened. The level of interest shown by the press was out of all proportion to the interest shown by the public. To the fury of her fans, exhibitors now branded her box office poison. She's not topping the list at this point. She's still tremendously important to MGM because of their foreign market and because they had Garbo and there was only one Garbo. I love you, Mary. Actually, she was not really popular in small towns. She was much too sophisticated. Her acting was much too subtle. And, and both subtle and operatic, really, because emotionally it was so full. I shall never long for spring again. It embarrassed people in small towns that, because they didn't behave that way. They, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, uh, I love you. That's it. But she gave so fully of herself, I think it really embarrassed people. My gosh, I remember a period when uh, my father always said, uh, oh, I don't want to go see that Greta Garbage movie. And what they're wanting at that point, I think they wanted new young personalities. I think they wanted something alive and vital. And Greta Garbo isn't representing that anymore in the theaters to most, the average moviegoer, at least the average American moviegoer.